In part four of our project video, we'll be demonstrating how to install the speaker for the sound system and painting. The first thing then was to uh, add a little bit of a cutout right here. You say, now what's that all about? Well, you remember I mentioned that we were gonna put a sound system in. And so the speaker had to be uh, mounted and that's gonna go on the center wing section. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But to get that fit through, I had to cut it out here. And so you can see that in relation to the uh, airplane's fuselage is where that sound system is gonna mount. So let me take a second Put, bring the main part of the wing in and show you how that's going together. Now as I've read about the model, one of the things that modelers have commented upon is the need to add weight to the nose and so there's a little bit of a potential for some uh, CG problems and so to minimize the impact of of adding this fairly heavy speaker into the model is that I measured back from the leading edge the the, the distance for the center of gravity in the direction say 70 to 75 millimeters back. I marked that on the wings and then I drew a line across from the two marks. I centered the speaker so that the middle of the speaker was on the line, the X that's formed from the center going front to back and the 73 millimeter uh, line going from right to left uh, and then just drew a circle. From there I took my hobby knife and then I just started scratching out the foam. I do that by just making, you know, half inch cuts going one way and half inch cuts going the other and then just kind of scraping on the foam. You can use a rotary tool with a sanding disc or a sanding drum on it. Uh, that was kind of going slow. I did try to do that, but ultimately what worked best was just the hobby knife and just kind of crisscross the foam and then dig it out. Now I've dug this out to about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half deep and I wanted it deep enough for the speaker to fit in here quite uh, deeply so I have some room to put a little bit of glue around the edge. I also discovered that there is a, a, a fiberglass rod buried in the foam to give this some stiffness so I was glad to see that it gives it some extra support that I wasn't aware that it was in there uh, and I did that when I was drilling in some little holes so that the sound had a way to get out from this uh, this foam so I just used a drill uh, and a small drill bit drilled through some of the marks you can see some little red spots there where I had marked where I wanted to drill. So at this point, um, all I've really got to do is drop the speaker in and uh, add some glue, and then that's going to be in there uh, quite nicely. Uh, the hole that I just showed you is where this power line is going to go up. Now the other thing that I end up having to do is I move the hole that the wire snake from the middle of the um, panel up and I just cut a bevel in that to move it south a little bit to move it toward the tail uh, because to, uh, it was important for me to have the speaker on the center of gravity uh, and so I had to make a little bit of, of a hole in there and so there's not much room for those wires and so the speaker will probably be the last thing that goes in with a little bit of glue in there after I get the wires fished through uh, from the wings coming in from from both sides and so um, that's about all I'm going to do on the sound system at this point, but now is the time for me to explain it to you uh, because it's about time to go to the paint shop, which is uh, kind of the final step before assembling the model, and then you'll see how all this electronics fit together and is hooked together when we talk about the wiring uh, after we get it all painted. When it comes to painting your model, you can use the rattle cans or what I like to do is I like to use these craft paints that you can get at like Michaels or Walmart or those kind of places. This one is a cadmium yellow which is really close match to the yellow that I want for this particular AT6. But you can also then if you're using this, um, in this case I'm going to be using a little spray gun that I have, just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. Otherwise if you have an airbrush you can use the airbrush as well. Now my point here is not to teach you how to use the spray gun. That'll depend upon the, um, the, uh, the device that you're using. But enough to say that I'm going to be putting the paint into the paint holder. And then you notice I've got this glass cleaner sitting here. And that's what I use to thin the paint. This kind of paint is way too thick for an airbrush or a spray gun. And the window cleaner is a great way to thin the paint because it also then lowers the viscosity of the thickness and the the stickiness of the paint and so it'll go through the spray gun pretty easily now for me it's kind of a matter of uh, trial and error I often end up mixing it in the um, 
in the bucket, in the paint container here, and then I just add the quite a bit actually of the window cleaner until I get it mixed enough so that it's actually coming through the spray gun. I start with about 50-50 as a matter of fact, and then I just use lots of light coats to cover it. I don't really lay it on thick that first time with the with the spray gun. I just use lots of light, light coats to get it down to the color that I need. Now I've got the compressor hooked up to the spray gun and I'm going to be showing you this, some painting that I'm going to do here on the tailpiece. Um, and so I'll have the volume go down so you don't have to listen to the compressor. It's a pretty little noisy guy in the background. So we'll get the paint mixed up and show you how I go about spraying uh, the pieces, whether it's a little piece like this or one of the larger pieces that make up the model. I've got this piece done now. I went back and forth a number of times as you saw and it got some really good coverage. I had the paint thinned accordingly. Uh, I went through the nozzle real easily and so it turned out really nice. Let me put the rest of the painted pieces down here on the paint table so you can see what it all looks like now that I've got the rest of it done as well. Okay, there we are with all the pieces painted yellow. You notice on the, the nose, I've got a little bit of masking tape still there, and I need to paint the flat black that goes across in front of the windscreen. Uh, but that'll be some touch-up work that I do just a bit, a bit later. You'll also notice that I spent a little bit of time painting on the cockpit itself. Besides getting the glass uh, masked and painted the panel lines there, I also uh, painted the inside of it that kind of chromium oxide color, that green that you often see uh, aircraft frames painted or inside wheel wells. And so I've got that a little bit darker in there. And I've got one of the pilots that I, I purchased instead of the ones that came with the kit going in there. I've got another one in the back that I've got to put in when I uh, finally glue both the pilots down and put the, um, the canopy cover onto the cockpit hatch itself. And now for just a couple of comments about the paint part of the project. I've used the spray technique with blues and reds and it works very well. I was not as happy with the coverage that I got with the yellow. I was talking with a fellow modeler who said that was not unusual, that yellow is a tough cover, uh, color to cover. And so what I went back and did is I got a wide uh, flat brush and my hobby paint and then just brushed another coat on top of it. And as it turned out, it looks really good. You can hardly see brush strokes anywhere and I just kind of went across it going back and forth in kind of a thatched pattern to get the paint in those little bumps in the foam and then did a real quick uh, light coat and, it, and it, as it dried it smoothed out and it looks really good. Now, the other thing that I did to finish it up is I used some of this Minwax gloss poly base or water-based polyurethane and in a little foam brush. And what I did here was just put a little of the Minwax on it and then just gently brushed the Minwax on top of the, the model, which gave it a really nice clear finish and a nice gloss finish since this is what I wanted this model to be. The craft paint is flat paint, this is gloss and it gives it a nice, nice coverage. Now one of the things you want to do when applying the uh, water-based polyurethane is kind of hold it up to the light as you go so that you can see where it's wet and if you see a place that's streaky or dry then you get your brush and put back over the top of it again so that you've got a nice wet finish. Now I'm not talking thick but I am talking wet because when it dries those streaks are going to show flat and so that's just one of the things to watch out for. You can always go back and add a little more to cover what you've missed but doing it well the first time is probably worth the trouble. Now the next part of the project is going to be just putting the model back together. Depending on the model you're using the instructions are going to be different so we're here with this Dynam AT6 I'm going to be uh, putting the the landing gear back in, putting the um, leads to the landing gear into the center section of this, fishing them up through this hole here in the middle. We'll get the spar in here 
and then attach the wings. And now I've got a little bit of extra wire coming from the wings. I've got the uh, aileron servo and the landing lights and the nav lights that I added, all of which will be fished through the middle part of this and I'm then out through the top. When I've got that done, then I'll use the screws to attach the wings. Then screw on the empennage and attach the uh, push rods from the servos and we'll have most of the assembly done and then we'll spend some time with the electronics. So since your model is going to be different, I'm going to go off camera, finish putting this together and we'll be back to talk about the electronics. <music>